the girl is entirely innocent, and it's only that justice may be done her that I write this, otherwise I would not have written this, for I fairly hate the Borden name. The instrument the deed was done with was a lather's hatchet, and was dropped overboard from a Fall River steamer at the dock. Entrance to the house was gained by a front window afterwards, fastened egress by side window. The time of revenge, about 11.45, I think. And the illegitimate who took the revenge is the writer of this confession. Yours truly, Philip Gordon Reed. Where are you going? You are not going into that room. Don't you interfere. Everywhere that I looked, not a trace of crimson could be found. Welcome to Lizzie Borden's Audio. Season 2. We are going to search this house in your room. You are not going into that room. Don't you interfere. Ten cents of prussic acid, please. Lizzie. 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 And now, the inquest of John Morse, played by David Loftus, with District Attorney Hosea Knowlton, played by Tim Dennis. What is your name? John V. Morris. What does the V stand for? Vindicum. What is your place of residence, Mr. Morris? For the last year, it has been South Dartmouth. My real home is in the West. Whereabouts in South Dartmouth? William A. Davis. I shall have to ask you many questions. I will answer any questions. What is your business? When I am home, farming. Here? Nothing particular. I have been helping Mr. Davis some in the meat business he is in here. Have you had any connection with the horse business? Not recently. I bought some horses here when I came two years and a half ago. All sold out now? Yes, sir. Have you had any dealings in horses since then? A little along occasionally, not to amount to anything. What relation is Mr. Davis to you? None. Years before I went west, I worked for them in the meat business. I've always kept up correspondence since. It seems like home to me, and I'd like to stay there. Isaac C. Davis, his son, is in the meat business with him. The old man I cannot see now has a cancer. I stay there with them. Are you a married man? No, sir. Never have been? No, sir. This question you are not obliged to answer unless you want to. Are you a man of some property? Yes, sir. Enough to live on without working? Yes, sir. Now, what relation were you to Mr. Borden? Mr. Borden's first wife was my sister. What was her name? Sarah A. Morse. How long ago did she die? Well, I can't tell exactly, but somewhere during war times. How old was her youngest child? About 30. I can't tell exactly. No, when she died. I think about three years old. How long have you been in the West? Since I first went West? Yes. I think about 38 years. What part of the West? When I first went West, I went to Minnesota, stayed about a year, and came from there to Macomb County, uh, Illinois. Where have you spent the largest portion of your time? The largest portion? I guess in Iowa, Hastings, Mills County. Was that your last residence in the West? Yes, my property is there. Did you come here with the intention of remaining here? I rented my farm for one year. I did not know how long I might stay. I calculated to stay, then I rented it for another year. Where did you come to here first? Warren, Rhode Island. Who did you know there? I have an uncle there. No relative of Mrs. Borden? No, brother to my father. On the other side? Yes, sir. Then that is uncle to Mrs. Borden, too? Yes, sir. What is his name? Charles. Charles Borden? No, Morris. How long did you stay there? I guess about a year and a half. When did you first come to see Mr. A.J. Borden? After I came back this time from the West, do you mean? Yes, A few weeks after. I can't tell just when. You were on terms of acquaintance with him and his family, I suppose. Yes, sir. Had you visited him during your absence in the West, or had you been East during that time? I don't understand. Had you been East during the last 38 years? Oh, yes. I came the first time just after the war. I guess the same year the war ended. Then I was here the year before the centennial... And the year afterwards, and I were here, I think, seven years, so, yeah. On those visits, did you come to the Bordens, too? Always stayed there, at one time, nearly a year of the time. Have you kept up a correspondence with the Bordens? Yes, sir. During that whole time? That is, with his oldest daughter. Which one is that? Emma. Never with the rest of them? I used to have a letter occasionally from my brother-in-law. From Borden himself? Yes, sir. How frequent was the correspondence with Miss Emma? Probably once in three or four months. 
when you came back, after you'd been here a short time, you came to see them this time? Yes, it was troublesome. I could not come for three or four weeks. How often did you come to see them after that? Are you a trifle hard of hearing? No, I thought I could hear as well as anyone. How often did you come to see them after that? Sometimes once a week, sometimes once in three or four weeks, sometimes once in three months, just as it happened. Did you often stay overnight? Yes, sir, quite often. Were you on good terms with all the family? Yes, sir. The last time you were there before this murder was when? I should think somewhere about the 10th of July. How long did you stay then? I did not stay, but a short time. I was here overnight, but I went down to an aunt's on the Stafford Road at that time. What was her name? Catherine Boudre. Before that, can you recall the last time you were there? It was somewhere the last of June. I know Phoebe Curry was sick at that time. She died a little afterwards. I think about the last of June. Did you stop all night then? No, sir. I came over in the morning and went back at night. I, I can tell all about that time if you want me to. There was a lady came over, Mr. Davis's daughter, with me. We drove over in the afternoon. I hired a horse, and Mr. Borden's daughter went to ride. We went down to the steamboat. I took her home after dark. Did you see much of Miss Lizzie when you came to the house? Sometimes. Sometimes I did not see either of the girls. Stayed a few minutes and talked with Mr. Borden and went out. Take the last time but one in July, when you went down to Boudre's. Did you see Miss Lizzie then? I don't think I saw either of them at that time. Take the time before that, when Miss Davis came over with you. Did you see the girls then? I saw Emma. I went to ride. I told you. Did you see Lizzie? I don't think I did. The day of the tragedy, the visit on the occasion when the murder happened, did you see her? No. I came here about a half past one a week ago today. I think it was. Did you see Miss Lizzie before the murder? No, I did not. Had you often stopped overnight? Why, occasionally. Had you seen much of the state of the domestic relations in the family? No, I don't know, but I saw. So you could speak with any positiveness as to the relations between Lizzie and her mother? They were always on good terms, as far as I know. Well, I might make the same remark. Did you see enough of her when you were there and of her relations to speak with positiveness as to what her relations were with her mother? I should think they were pleasant. She used to eat to the table with her. I did not see anything. Did she usually eat with her? Occasionally, sometimes in the morning, she would not eat there. Probably would not be up. The last three times you were there, you did not see Miss Lizzie at all. I don't think I did. You ate meals there. The last time I ate dinner there, the last time I was there, that is all. You did not see her then. I take that back. Dinner and breakfast. You did not see her then? No, sir. The time before, did you eat there? No, I think I went down to aunt's. When Miss Davis came over, did you eat there then? Yes, we took dinner and supper. And you did not see Miss Lizzie then? No. When is the last time you remember eating at the table with Miss Lizzie before the tragedy? I don't know as I can call to mind. You have done so? Yes. Have you done so in six months? Oh, yes, several times. You say that the day before the tragedy, you came uh, about what time? I left New Bedford on the 1235 train. I suppose I got to his house about half past one. Eat dinner there? Yes, sir. They had been to dinner. Had you written you were coming? I think not. Were you in the habit, since this year and a half of being here, of writing to any of them? I wrote to Mr. Borden. Had you written to either of your nieces? Emma has to me. Never to Lizzie. No. Lizzie has not written you, nor you to her. No, sir. You have no letters from Lizzie in your possession. No, sir. You do not think written announcing your visit at this time? I don't think I did. Let me see. Let me tell it as I can think. Mr. Borden, when I was over here sometime in July, that I speak of, I wanted to know if I knew of a man he could get on his farm to take charge of it. I told him I did not know. I would see. When I got back, I wrote him I knew of a man I thought would suit him. I would send him over. He wrote back to me he had rather I would wait until I saw him. I have his letter in my pocket if you want to see it. What was the date of that letter? You may refresh your memory. If you have no objections, I will see it. Have you any objection to me keeping this? No, sir. I would not like it lost, because it was the last one I ever had from him. That, then, was the last correspondence before you came over? That is the last. You did not write him you were coming? No, sir. You came partially in pursuance of that request? Yes, sir. Was that about ten days before you came? Yes, sir. So they were not expecting you that particular day, but were looking for you at any time? Yes, sir. Who did you see at the house when you got there at noon? Mr. Borden, that is Andrew, and his wife. And the servant girl? Yes, I saw her first. Emma was away? Yes. Uh, now then, tell what happened that day. Well, 
I went in there, and the first thing I asked the girl, she was the first person I saw when I got there, I asked if Mr. Borden was at home, or Andrew, I don't know which. She said he was on the lounge. Go on. I went in, and he got up. The lounge was on this side of the room. Him and Mrs. Borden sat there and chatted. He asked if I had been to dinner. I told him I had not, but was not hungry at all. Mrs. Borden said, We have just had dinner. A little while ago. It is all warm. I will put it on. She did in the dining room. I sat down and ate... And we went back in the sitting room and chatted again until between three and four. I was going to Swansea. I came over to Kirby's stable, hired a horse and a buggy, and went over to Swansea. With Mr. Borden? No, sir. I asked him to go. He said he did not feel able to. They were indisposed, all of them, that day. And the daughter? Yes. Mrs. Borden told me they had all been sick. Who did you see at the farm? A man by the name of Frank... The Swede? No, an American. Frank Eddy, I, I can think, if you give me a little time. Anybody else? I saw... I saw what I supposed to be his wife. I never was acquainted with her. Any other farmhand? No, sir. Stayed a supper over there? No, sir. I ate supper at William Vinicom's, a little beyond there. In Warren? No, in Swansea. Got back home about what time? I got back to the house probably quarter to nine. Not far from that, after dark. When you got there, who did you find at home then? I think the girl was there, the servant, and Mr. and Mrs. Borden. And Lizzie? I know they were there. Did you make any inquiries about Lizzie? I I did not. Nothing was said about her? No, sir. Did she come in while you were there? Did you hear or see her come in? I heard the front door shut. The girls usually come in and go upstairs when they come in with their clothes on in that way. I heard her come in. I supposed it was her. Emma was not at home. What time did you retire that night? Mr. and Mrs. Borden and me sat there and talked half an hour, probably, and Mrs. Borden retired. Mr. Borden and me probably sat there until about ten o'clock. He says, John, is it not about time we went to bed? I said, it is about ten, isn't it? I, I, I think it is. So you both went to bed together? No, he went up to... At the same time? Yes, sir. You slept in the same room where this woman was found dead the next day? Yes, sir. In the morning, what time did you arise? I think I got up about six o'clock. Was you the first one up? I think so. I did not see anybody in the room when I got up. Was the servant up? I think not. She was not downstairs. Who's the first one you did see? Mr. Borden. He got up before the servant girl. I saw him first. What time did he come out? I think he had been up some half hour when he came down, very near to it. How did he appear to be that morning, in his health? He said he felt some better. Did you happen to know of his taking some medicine? I asked him to go over to Swansea. He said he did not feel able to. I says, I will wait until morning, if you will go. He said no, he had been taking some medicine and did not think he would go. Did he say what it was? Physic, I supposed. He did not say what it was? No, sir. Did you see Mrs. Borden? She came down soon after. And how did she appear to be? She said she felt real well that day, that is, to what she had done. What time did you have breakfast? A little after seven, I think. Are you pretty sure about the time of breakfast? I don't think it could have been more than 20 minutes past seven. I judge about that time. Can you remember what you had for breakfast? Yeah, I don't know as I do know. I know what we had the day before for dinner. What did they have the day before for dinner? Some veal, sort of a soup-like. That would not warm over for breakfast, then? I could not tell what they had. Did they have some kind of meat? I think some kind. Do you remember whether they had some sort of fruit? Uh, apples or pears or bananas? There was bananas on the table. And further than that, you cannot remember? No, sir. Did they all eat pretty heartily? Not very. They both ate? Both Mr. and Mrs. Borden? Yes, sir. Did they eat fruit? I don't think they did. When did you leave the house? Well... About nine, but I should think maybe quarter or twenty minutes of nine. What was going on in the intervening time before you went? We went out in the sitting room from the dining room. And Mr. and Miss Borden, I talked a little while, and then she went to dusting around, doing her little chores. Then Mr. Borden and I talked about some cattle I had, and then I went away. Did you say where you was going? Yes, sir. I was telling the night before, up at Mr. Emery's, I had a nephew and niece from the West, and he told me where they lived and wanted me to go and see him. Did he tell you where they lived? Yes, sir. 4 Waybosset Street. Did you tell him you were going? Yes, sir. As I went out the door, he says, John, come back to dinner with us. That is the last he spoke to me. I said I would. I came to the uh, post office and got a car. When you came from New Bedford to Fall River, did you have any set time to go?
go back? Not particular, no. I told Mr. Davis I would try to get back the next day. He says, you will be gone two days, I guess. I will give you that. I could have gone back the night before at six o'clock or half past. You told Mr. Borden you would come back to dinner when he asked. Yes, sir. Had Lizzie got up when you went away? I had not seen her. When you went away, was Mrs. Borden downstairs? Don't think she was when I went away. She was there a few minutes before. Don't think I saw her when I came out. How long before you went away did you see her? I think not more than ten minutes. She had been about most of the time? Yes. Which door did you go out of? The back door. Was it fastened when you went out? Yes, and Mr. Borden opened it and let me out and hooked it himself. After you got out? Yes, sir. Was it the habit to keep that hook? Always. And the front door? Always keep it fastened. They have been very cautious, always have been, about the doors. Did you take notice what the servant girl was doing when you went out? I don't know. I heard Mrs. Borden tell her at breakfast time, if it was so she could, she would like for her to wash the windows. Did you hear Mrs. Borden say anything about going out that morning? No, sir. Did you know about her receiving any note? Only by hearsay since. What was that? I heard there was a note came and that somebody was sick. Who told you that? Anybody of the family? Lizzie. You did not hear anything of it at the time? No, sir. When did Lizzie first tell you that? I think in the afternoon. That same afternoon? I think so. She did not say who the note came from? No, she did not. Nor where she was to go? No, sir. But she had not gone when you came away? I think not. How came Mrs. Borden to speak to the servant girl at the breakfast table? I don't know. I suppose it came into her mind. The servant girl did not eat with you? No, sir. Was she in the room there? In and out of the room. The door was open. Into the kitchen. Now, had she begun to wash the windows when you went away? I could not tell you that. Did you see her when you went out through the kitchen? Yes, sir. What did she appear to be doing then? I did not notice. No. Won't you detail your movements after you left the house? That day? Yes. I left there 15 or 20 minutes of 9, came down to the post office, wrote a postal, and went up Bedford Street to 3rd Street, and went from there to Pleasant Street and up to Waybosset Street, number 4, Dan Emery's. Now, go on. How long did you stay there? I think I stayed there until about 20 minutes past 11, maybe a little later. You got there about 10? It must have been earlier. Did you see the relatives you went there to see? I saw one. The young man was out. I did not see him. What was the young woman's name? Annie Morse. She was indisposed while I was there. She was on the lounge part of the time. She is my brother's daughter. You had not seen her for a good while? A great many years. Did she come from the same part of the West you lived? She belonged up in Minnesota. I went there first. The first you heard of her being there was from Mr. Borden? No, I was at her grandmother's. They told me she was there and had gone to Providence with one of her cousins. When I got off the cars, they got on. I just barely saw her. Have you ever been to Emery's before? Not this time. I had six or seven years before when they lived on North Main Street. What occasioned you to leave at 20 minutes past 11? Nothing. I thought it was about time to be going down. What time did the Borden family dine? 12, about. Did they ask you to stay for dinner? Yes, sir. I told them I had another engagement. The engagement you had was that engagement to dine with your brother? Yes, did you walk up? No, came on the streetcar. What time did you get to the Borden house? I think it must be pretty well towards 12. Within 15 or 20 minutes of it, I, I don't know, but it is quite that. Where did you get off the car? At 2nd Street. And walked up 2nd Street? Yes, sir. When was the first you heard that Mr. Borden was killed? When I went into the door. I went around, before I went into the house, to a pear tree to get a couple of pears. When I came back... The servant girl met me at the door and asked me if I had heard the news. I said no. She said Mr. and Mrs. Borden were both murdered. A man named Sawyer stood there at the time. Was anybody else in the house then? A man named Bowen. I think several policemen. I don't know. There was so much excitement. I know there was several women there. Had Dr. Dolan, this man here, come, the, the medical examiner? I could not tell you. They had found Mrs. Borden at that time? Yes, or she could not have told me. Where did you see Lizzie when you got in there? I think in the dining room. Who was she with? That I could not tell. How many people were in the house, do you, do you think, when you got there? I don't know. I think six or seven or eight. There was quite a number there. Were there people out? in the street. I did not see them when I went in. You did not see any excitement in the yard or on the street? Nothing to attract my attention at all. The car you came down on came straight down Pleasant Street from where you got on? Yes, sir. How far is it up there? I should think a good mile. Was not there a good many people in the street about that time when you came down? I did not see anything to attract my attention at all. Did you not see anything to attract your attention to the house when you went by? No, sir. Saw nothing to attract my attention at all. Nobody in the house at all? All I could see in was in the the screen door, I went right by, the same as I would on any occasion. Did you get your pears? Yes, sir. Then started for the house? Yes, sir. Did you stop to eat the pears? I think I was eating one when I went to the door. Tell me, 
Please, as near as you can, who you saw there that you can name when you got into the house? Why, the first two, they were right together. It were a man named Sawyer and this servant girl, Bridget something. Maggie, we will call her. Yes. Uh, the next I recognized was Dr. Bowen. There was such an excitement, and I was nerved up. I saw a number. I, I, I noticed Dr. Bowen right away. Did you see anybody else you did know besides those three and Lizzie? Yes, Lizzie. I, I don't know of anyone else. I can't say now. How many people all together in the house? Seven or eight, I think think I saw. I don't think more than that. What officers were there? I could not tell you. Some officers have talked with you since that time. Were any of the officers that have talked with you there then? I could not tell you. I did not notice. Did you know anything about the condition of Mr. Borden's property? Nothing particular. Had he ever talked with you about his property? Some, occasionally. Ever give you an idea of how much he was worth? No, sir. Did he ever talk with you about a will? Yes, sir, he has. When was the last time? Somewhere within a year. When you were there at the house? No, sir, I think we were outside at the time. What was the talk? He said he thought he should make some bequests outside to charitable purposes. He did not say any more either one way or the other. Did he say he had made a will. He did not say. He did not say whether he had or not? Whether he had or had not. Did he talk as though he was intending to make a will? I judged from that he was intending to. I drew my conclusions that he had not, but was thinking of it. Did he mention the bequests outside that he thought he should make? He did not. Well, how did he come to be speaking about it? Common conversation, I suppose. Same as about his land. I, before he bought the birch land, I was down there with him. He says, let's go up to Main Street. We went up. He says, here is a piece of property. Don't say anything about it, I have got a chance to buy. What is your opinion about it? I asked what it could be bought for. I don't know as he told me direct, but about. I says, I think it's good property in the heart of the city. The city will be coming towards it all the time. I believe it will be a good investment. Several months afterwards, one Sunday, he says, John, I did as you told me to. I says, what is that? I forgot all about it. I bought that birch land. I wish you would recall the conversation about the will as explicitly as you have this. That is all he said about the will. He thought of making Making some bequests out, you know, for charitable purposes. His farm over there, he was talking about the old lady's home. I don't know, but I would give them this if they would take it. Was that the same talk? I don't think it was the same time. Did he talk to you any other time about a will? I think that is all. That is the first and last time. Years ago, out west at my place one time, he said he had a will. Several years ago, he told me he had destroyed it. How long ago did he tell you he had destroyed it? Fifteen years ago. Did he tell you anything about the contents of the will? He did not. Listening to the inquest testimony of John Vinicum Morse from the Lizzie Borden trial, played by David Loftus, with District Attorney Jose Knowlton, played by Tim Dennis. Special guest appearances by Tanya Montoya, Jack Cohn, Dennis Alexander, and Ariel Nissenblatt. Produced by Kate Lavender. The introductory letter was from psychopath Philip Gordon Reed. Selected from the Knowlton Papers, published by the Fall River Historical Society. Also played by David Loftus, music composer E. Bunny. And Spring is Coming by Jack White. Consider supporting the show with a small monthly donation or one really big one. All proceeds cover the operating costs of keeping the show going without ads and never heard before trial testimony. Subscribers will receive bonus episodes, such as the autopsy of Mayor John Coughlin, called Not a Trace of Crimson, which is something he said when he observed there were no bloody footprints leaving the crime scenes. Yearly subscribers will get two months free. In addition, be the first to order the soft-spun cotton t-shirt in black that says Eat, Sleep, Lizzie Borden. You will receive these other special bonus episodes. The written report of private detective Nellie McHenry on Bridget Sullivan and the grand jury interview of ex-BFF Alice Russell. And year two will be a deep, deep dive on the preliminary testimony of Bridget Sullivan with over 1,000 questions. And I'm Don Sharp saying... 
We'll see you in the next one.